Hello world, I'm Brandcliff, and I should be back to uploading regularly, which I'm really happy about. I'm not happy about how some of it might need to be Grand Chase. There, there's this balance patch, which was actually alluded to before. They said in, um, what is it, the conference, that uh, we'll fix some of these things on July 8th. And well, here is the July 8th patch. Now, I haven't read this patch yet. This is a blind reaction video. <coughs> oh god, that one didn't come out right. <coughs> Anyways, um, I haven't heard what this one is going to be like, but I have heard that people are really mad about it. There have been a few server meltdowns in some of the communities that I'm in, and I couldn't be bothered to read everything that people said uh, and pull out the Google Translate for the patch notes on the official Korean website. So I waited for the translation, and here it is. Let's give it a look. Uh, so this is the July 8th balance patch notice. This is a blind to take. Let's see. All characters awakening time stop standards have been unified. Equal time stop will occur based on the awakening motion. They did mention that they were going to do this. Uh, limit to physical magical damage and action speed increase from buffs. This is to prevent excessive power increase due to synergies and characters moving in an unintended way. Ooh, um, okay, that's certainly different. I wasn't expecting to hear that today. Uh, so, more specifically, Awakening Time Stop. All characters' time stop has been adjusted to motion time plus 0.3 seconds for all characters. PvP Hit Motion. PvP Hit Motion is not affected by action speed. I'm going to assume that when they say that, they mean hit stun f taken from attacks. Um, I, I wonder why it wasn't just like this to begin with, but... Physical, magical, action speed buffs. Limits set for stat increase from buffs. So physical and magical damage increase. Additional stat from buffs does not go over the maximum 3 times 200%. Are they saying you can't triple your attack power? Because... Uh, can you do that anyway? Like, I don't think... How many buffs would it take? to go that high. Action speed increase. Additional stat from buffs does not go over the maximum of 1.4 times. 40% only counted on buffs that multiply the action speed stat. Uh, I feel like this is one of those things where it sounds real bad, but we're gonna need some further testing to see how bad it is. And then the testing comes out and then it's as bad as we think it is. I don't know how I want to comment on this, I feel like this could be a really bad change, and we'll just leave it at that for now. Some characters' buff effects will be increased based on combat le Oh no. Oh no. This is according to the feedback that buff effectiveness should be based on combat level. Okay. Okay, who said that? Who, who said that? I only want to talk to them. Uh, more buffs will be changed like this in the future. <laughs> For this balance patch, some skill damage increasing effects and recovery effects will be affected. Oh man, okay, we're only just getting started, and I can see why people are mad at this already. Freaking like, ooh, you need 3 million combat power on your raid buff alts. That's, oh, or, or, is this really how we're gonna play a game? Oh, don't do this to me. Okay, some characters' buff effects will be applied only to self. By reducing some characters' party effectiveness, we are intending increased participation of other characters with similar party effectiveness. Huh. So are they saying like, oh, well if we make Metamorphy bad, that means people will play other characters, right? Is that what they're saying? Hmm, okay. Some skills effects that don't suit the character's concept will be changed. For, uh, for example, Ignition, Crow, Napalm. Becoming super armored by touching the flames didn't seem right with the skill's concept, so this will be changed. Blood Falls. Party heal doesn't seem right uh, with the character that consumes HP to increase damage per second. That is not how DPS is meant to be used, so this will be changed. I Okay, this part I can agree with. You can't just make skills that weren't meant to be buffs into buffs. Like, like, it needs- whether or not a skill is a buff is something that should be decided upon to begin with. Well, anyways, let's move on. Characters and skills that score excessively well during the Pruinom raid 
will be adjusted. So in PvP, Part 1, Preventing Unfair Circumstances Due to Action Speed. Hitmotion is not affected by action speed anymore. This is the start of our patches to prevent action speed causing unfair circumstances in PvP. Still don't know why it wasn't like this to begin with. Number 2. Based on high scoring characters per each rank, skills that cause stress to opponents will be adjusted. Uh huh. Uh, some characters' escape skills will also be adjusted as well. Okay, that was just the like uh, generic kind of like thought process slash outline behind the patch. Let's see the actual execution of all of these ideas that they've said they want to change. So, Elsword, uh, Dodge Step, his evasion skill, skill cast speed decreased by 33%, backstep movement distance for additional skill key input is reduced. Okay, Aisha's Protection, 1.5 second barrier, nerf to 1 second barrier. Uh, Wisdom Aura, magic damage increase is 30%, for 30 seconds in dungeons, 10% for 15 seconds in PvP, that is being nerfed to... Oh, 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 is that what they're... Give me a sec. Magic damage increase is nerfed to 3% plus 3% for every 500,000 comp- uh. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, oh, I do believe that this is what the kids call a bra moment. Alright, so, uh, let's talk about this. So, in order for your wisdom aura, to be at the point that it is at now, after the change, you would need to get the additional magic damage increase based on your combat power nine times. Each one costs 500,000 combat power. So if you want your Aisha's buff to be unchanged by this patch, you would need... 4,500,000 combat power just for your party buffs to be at the same effectiveness that they are in Oh, oh, game, are you really going to do this to people? Now, I, I, I just like to point out that depending on which interpretation of the conference that you want to use that we've spent two videos talking about and I was supposed to make more, but Heat Wave... The first uh, interpretation that I showcased said that combat power was a feature that the devs are fully aware doesn't do anything that it's supposed to and is broken and they don't know how to fix. Now, the second translation, which I'm going to assume people will interpret as the canon translation, and I know that's not how translation works, but I mean, I think people believe that one more than the other. Their belief on that is that, oh, well, will adjust combat power requirements and difficulties. I feel like this even- oh my- oh my god, are you kidding me? Where am I even going with this? This is like- I, I am two characters into this rebalance and you've already broken me. And keep in mind that like, we're only talking about this from an endgame perspective. If you are in the new character process, trying to level up a character, you are going to be stuck with a magic attack buff that only gives 3% of magic damage, which keep in mind is a tenth of how much it does now, for the first 99 levels. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, guys, y'all you, you, see this, right? Like, this is a hot garbage to you guys too, right? Oh my god. Okay, okay, let's, let's move on. Alright, Dark Magician's Acceleration Aura. Right now, it is a 15% physical and magical damage increase with 10% action speed, 5% jump speed, 30% move speed for 30 seconds. In PvP, its stats are a little different. Guys, can, can I just not cover PvP stats anymore? Nobody cares about PvP! So, Space Acceleration. Multiplication is applied to the action speed stat. And I'm guessing what that means is that rather than giving you a flat 10% uh, buff, it will give you like 10% of how much you have so far. And then, well, anyways, 
I, because of that, this is kind of like comparing apples and motorcycles. Uh, th these two things should not be compared since they're calculated differently, but for the sake of thoroughness in this video, that 15% is dropped to a 10%, and the speed buffs are set to 10% across the board. Dark Web, time stop removed. Aw. Battle Magician, Power Aura, uh, gets gutted in the same way that Wisdom Aura does. Oh boy. Okay, alright. Uh, Reyna changes. There are none. Raven changes. Ignition Crow doesn't give the super arm anymore. Uh, it makes enemies within the flames take 15% more damage. I don't know if, like, they're going to handle that by, like, a debuff appears over their heads, because if so, then it's not gonna work on a lot of things. Or if, like, it's just an innate function that will work all the time. Oh, well, any- Oh, boy. I'm- I- my heart is not ready for the chung changes. Okay. Let me just... Okay. Okay, let's see those chung changes. Oh! They just nerfed Shout from two seconds to one second of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh wait, no, here it is. Iron Paladin, Rapid Guardian. Rapid Guardian effect is removed if the skill buff below is applied. Repose of Souls, Soul Orbs, uh, Ashura, Mod, Wind Hose, Tornado, Blue Hen. Um, now it is changed to, uh, stack with those things. So it stacks with those things instead of losing the buff with those things. Okay, that's not so bad. Shooting Guardian, Sharpshooter Syndrome is now a self buff. Ooh, boy. Okay. Okay. Mod Sharpshooter Syndrome is a self buff. Mod Trick Shot, Brief Invincibility during Casting Removed. Ugh. Oh, okay. All right. Here are the changes to my class. I'm not ready for this. Tactical Field, Sheer Super Armor and Buff to Allies. Super armor and buff only to self. Wow. Okay, so what is the point of this skill having this giant glowing blue visual effect? And then now, if other people step in it, they get nothing. Or, well, okay, I don't know if it's nothing. Uh, it says sheer super. Oh, nope. Nope. Yup. It's nothing. The super armor only goes to yourself. The buff only goes to yourself. Wow. <laughs> now, you know what? Okay, let me just let me just break for a second. and Let me just say, hey, KOG, <laughs> if you think this is going to make people stop using Centurion Raid, no, you have a situation where one of the best party buff supports is also one of the best attackers in the game. So, uh, no, you're- I see what you're going for, but no, let's move on. Elysis, roll and dodge, skill cast speed decrease 33% backstep. Yeah, it's the same as Elswords. Uh, Blazing Heart, Ignis Crusher, uh, its damage is nerfed but only in PvP. Why? Oh yeah, didn't they say there was a Bloody Queen only rebalance? As a part of this, well, let's see if that happens. Uh, Flame Lord, Mod Ignis Crusher loses damage only in PvP. Alright, Crimson Avenger, Blood Falls, allies within aura recover HP, change to take less damage within the aura, uh, but only the user. So, rather than the party gaining 17% HP within the Blood Falls, uh, the user now takes 15% less damage. Ooh, boy. Alright, okay. Iron Changes, Blood Bloom, uh, Edel, Eyed, Rain, Truth of Nature, continuously HP MP recovery of all party members within Blad Bloom by 6%. That is being changed to continuous HP MP recovery of all party members uh, by 1%. Recovery increases by every 1% for every 400,000 combat power. Now, I mean, this is less vomit inducing in the sense that in order to get the buff to be back to the way it was before it's nerfed, you would only, and I say only in quotation marks here, only need 2 million combat power, which is a whole lot less gross than 4.5 million combat power. Now that I say that out loud again, I'm remembering all of the times that Aisha's have had unwarranted victim complexes, and I think this is the first time where it is entirely justified for them to feel that way. Um, I gotta say, though, nerfing just the healing 
is not going to make people stop using this character in raids. In fact, I don't think it will even decrease the popularity of him in raids. Like, okay, sure, he might not heal as much. Well, no, actually, by the time you're in the birth raid, your combat power is probably around the point where it's evened out anyway. In fact, you it might even increase because now you could technically go up to a 16% HP recovery or HP MP recovery uh, every second. Uh, so, uh, KOG, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but I think it's safe to say you probably didn't pull it off. Labby changes. Uh, Shining Romantica Sun Shower is changed from 15% party HP MP recovery times 3, 45% total, is changed to 2% HP MP recovery times 3. You'll get 2% back for every 400,000 combat power. Uh, now, you will not get 15%, you will either get 14 or 16%. So, if you wanted to make it slightly stronger than it is right now, you would need to get the combat power boost 7 times, which would cost you, or I mean, I say cost, that's not really how this works, but 2.8 million combat power to equalize your healing to be back to the way, or not really equalize either, but get your healing a tiny bit above what it was before this patch. Noah changes. Silent Shadow, Pursuit, its damage is getting nerfed. Uh, that's probably not surprising. New Moon's Shadow, its damage is getting nerfed, also not surprising. Second Collection, Command Dash XZZ Dash Jump CX, Command Stellar Dice's attacks hit stun time reduced. Words, okay. Stellar Caster, Deimos and Phobos, time stop removed. Hore, Void, of course, hit count reduced from three times to two times. Celestia changes, Navigator of Space, when the Gemini symbol area is generated, reduces incoming damage by 99.99% damage for a short moment. You, you, you think that was really necessary, guys? Well, it's still gonna be 80%, so uh, don't whine, Noah Baines. You're still doing just fine here. Although, the special active cooldown time reduction is nerfed from 1.5 seconds to just 1 second. Ma Deimos Phobos loses the time stop as well. Pale Pilgrim, Moon's Origin, HP MP recovery 5%, uh, scales with combat power. So, uh, right now it is 0.4%, so it is now uh, less than 10% of what it is now. Now, you will get an additional 0.4% back uh, for every 400,000 comp power you have. Max is out at 6%, you, so you could technically make it better than it is now, but in order for it to equalize, you would need combat power boost 12 times, which would cost, not really cost, you would need 4.8 million combat power uh, to get your healing a tiny bit above uh, where it is before these changes. <sighs> and those are the changes. So, yeah, this isn't going over well, Lamau. KOG gonna regret this mistake. They were over dramatizing, you said. Oh, wow, being petty, are we? I was saying people were being dramatic about the level up changes. This is different. Grow up, Lamau. Well, did it mean only high level character will be able to heal with Labby and Ayn? What? Uh, time for Rast means to wail hard just to heal their party properly. Ha! We will improve, they said. Who the hell asked for this? Yeah, seriously, um, I mean, the, okay, so let's talk about this. KOG says that they want to be more transparent. They say, oh, well, we're going to use uh, uh, data that we've gathered about player uh, input and uh, results, and we are going to use that to be based on uh, the things and stuff. And, you know, I, I'm just wondering, like, this is according to the feedback that buff effectiveness should be based on combat allowed. Did people actually say that? I know that there are some people watching my videos who are connected to the Korean space. Did people in Korea say this? Because I really doubt anybody in my server said this. And if people did say this, why did they say this? This would only make it harder to find people to raid with, because now you need to find people who not only have the right class, but you need them to have the right class and have the high enough combat power necessary for their buffs to mean anything. I will say only a few buffs are actually getting combat power scaling right now, but they're probably using this patch as a way of testing how people feel about it. I mean, obviously, people are mad about it, but I, I kind of consider this to be sort of like the Discord rebranding. If you don't do it to everyone at once, people will complain separately 
instead of all at once. So if they do protest about it, it won't feel like as big of a deal. So you won't feel as pressured to do anything about it. Uh, wow. Uh, I mean, okay, so overall, um... God, I, I think like the best way I can describe this patch is they're trying to do things without thinking about why they should be doing those things and it shows. Like, okay, maybe they want to equalize raid party usage so that maybe some classes that are used in raid more aren't used as much. But making popular classes not as good is not going to make bad classes usable. The bad classes are still going to be bad it's just that the good classes are going to be not as good. And, you know, even with the changes that you made, oftentimes you only changed like one or two skills per class. So, as far as nerfs go, like, you didn't even really nerf them all that much. It's just that the nerfs that you've made were really stupid. <sighs> wow, I... <sighs> this is exhausting. Reading these rebalances is, is exhausting. I know technically all I'm doing is uh, turn on screen recorder, uh, plug in microphone, start talking, but I feel really exhausted after having read this. This is just really tiring to watch, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you guys are probably really mad right now, and if so, uh, sound off in the comments, because, uh, see... Okay, okay, we're gonna end off this video with a bit of a sour note, but this is honestly how I feel right now, right? So, everybody knows that, like, 4th Path is just a distraction, right? Like, we're all on the same page about this, right? Like, we all agree, oh, they're just saying that as a PR stunt to buy more time to screw up the game because we'll be patient with them if we know that classes are coming. And here's the thing, everybody knows that it's garbage, but from what I've noticed, Promotional videos about 4th Path have really positive approval ratings on YouTube. Like, sure people are mad in the comments, but it seems like everybody really likes this. I had a comment thread in my video about Grand Chase going off, and uh, somebody said that KOG indirectly called its players sheep by um, throwing out 4th Path as a shiny new distraction. And it made me think, like, okay, yeah, it's one thing to imply that your players are sheep, but is it possible that they are? Because they're eating up fourth path despite how much they know they shouldn't. I'm disappointed with this, but I don't know if people are going to be mad enough to really do anything about it. That's how I feel about it. I'm Brancliffe. Goodbye, everyone.